morning, everyone. How are you today? So today's video is a little bit different. I just wanted to take you along with me for a day in the life and talk about how to get the best things done. If you struggle with going to bed at night, feeling guilty and feeling heavy and just feeling like you're not measuring up, you're not getting enough done, you're not getting the right things done, I want you to know that you are absolutely not alone. I think all women at some point or another in their life struggle with that feeling of not measuring up. There are so many pressures and responsibilities and stressors and even good and fun things that just demand our time. And it can be really difficult to prioritize and figure out how to balance and juggle all of the things. And so that's where this three bucket system comes in. The three bucket system is a way to plan your days. Now, I do wanna tell you that we have an entire guide on how to get the best things done. So if you want more of a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get the best things done, some of the reasoning behind this, and you really want to see the process detailed out so that you can follow it, I would definitely recommend checking out the links below and checking out the guide to getting the best things done. But today I want to live it out. I wanna show you what a day in the life using this three bucket system would really look like and just take you along for the ride and see how it goes. I've gotten up, had my coffee. I love my morning coffee. That is definitely pretty much the only piece of a morning routine that I have right now. We just moved into this house, so you'll probably even see in this video, there is like subfloor showing some places because we're in the middle of remodeling. So things have been pretty chaotic, but by making a prioritized to-do list, by following this three bucket system, I can still make sure that the most important things get done today. So I'm gonna take my planner and I'm gonna fill out for today what I need to get done and then take you along with me as we check all the things off. It's a good idea to make your daily plan either the night before or at the beginning of the day, but you can make one at any time of day. And it starts with the first bucket, which is main priorities. Now that includes a habit for the day, your main objectives for the day, and some passion item for the day. So we like to use the acronym of hop to it to remember those three things. So your habit being something you do every single day without fail, your objectives being the three to five things that you absolutely want to get done that day. A good way to think about these objectives is to ask yourself the question, if I went to bed tonight and only got these three to five things done, what would I want them to be? And I really encourage you to keep that to three to five so that it is an attainable number of things that you can actually get done. And then of course your passion, make that something that really fills your cup, something you enjoy. So in this example, I had make the bed as my habit. My objectives were to go to the store, order divider tabs and write a newsletter. And my passion was a yoga practice. Then move on to your appointments. Now appointments are kind of like tasks you need to do that have a timestamp attached. So that might simply be something like a Zoom call that you're gonna be home for, or it might be somewhere that you need to go, but I'd encourage you to write down what time it is and what the appointment is that you need to get to so that you make sure you get to all of those appointments. And those first two buckets are really what you're going to focus on for the day. If you only get buckets one and two done, the day is absolutely a success because your last bucket, which is bucket three, is your wish list. And wish list items are things that you'd like to get done and you'd like to get to if you have extra time in the day, but it's just that, it's a wish list. I know we like to say a lot, don't let your to-do list be your wish list, but it's really important to still have that wish list, kind of that place to brain dump what you need to get done so you know that you've safely compiled all of that information somewhere and it's not going anywhere, you can come back to it. And I actually really like to make my main priorities list based off of previous wish lists. So this is a really helpful framework that you kind of get what you're definitely focusing on for today and what you can kind of put to the side for today and can get to if you get to it.
here we are. It's already the next day. And per usual, the evening was even busier than the morning and I didn't have my camera out for the evening, but I wanted to come back and connect with you and kind of recap the day, recap the three bucket system, and most importantly, go back to that concept of guilt because here is the kind of bad news. Simply following the three bucket system isn't actually going to automatically get rid of guilt because here's the thing I have noticed about guilt. Guilt is a lot like a grease stain in a shirt. So if you've ever been like cooking with oil or something and then accidentally spilled oil on yourself, those stains can be so hard to get out. I think we all have experience with that. And it doesn't matter how many times you wash the shirt. It doesn't matter how much you scrub. Sometimes those oil stains just do not come out. And it doesn't mean that the shirt is dirty. I mean, it is a sanitary piece of clothing, but you can still see the stain because the stain itself isn't coming out. And guilt is really a kind of similar thing that it can linger even when there's not really a great reason for it to linger. So this is where the battle against guilt moves from being in your to-do list and the things you do every day to being right up here in your mind. It takes both. It takes going out there and doing the best things, but then it takes working on your self-talk and on your mind to know that you are doing the best things. One of my favorite authors is Emily P. Freeman, and she wrote the book Grace for the Good Girl, and I highly recommend reading it, but there's one part of it in particular that relates to this conversation, and that's where she talked about this concept of setting your mind. And she said that a lot of people have this default mode of shame. And default mode is kind of like the screensaver on a computer. So you know when your computer falls asleep whenever you're not actually actively using it? Whatever pops up on the screen is the screensaver. And she described people's minds being very similar. That if we're not actively directing our mind and telling our mind which way to think, then we're probably gonna go into screensaver mode or a default mode. And for so many of us, that mode is guilt and shame. And that's why the three bucket system alone isn't actually going to get rid of all of the guilt because once you've started getting the best things done, once you've started consistently knocking out your main priorities, then it's time to retrain your default mode so that your default mode is actually peace and contentment and joy and not stress and guilt. Now that all sounds great conceptually, but how do you actually do that? And that is where it is so nice to have something like the three bucket system. And I highly recommend whatever you use, whether you specifically break it into three buckets like I did today, or if you're just writing a to-do list every day or whatever it is, I highly recommend having a physical list that you can actually look at because you need to be able to tell your brain, brain, I got the best things done today. And you know what? It may sound silly, but say it out loud, say it loud and say it proud. I got the best things done today because your default mode is probably to think, oh, I'm not getting enough done. But we are working on retraining that. And we know that if we have knocked out our main priorities for today, the best things got done today. So no matter what else is left on the wish list, no matter what didn't get done, the best things got done. In fact, it sounds a little bit funny, but the opposite of a to-do list is kind of like a done list, a list of things that you have gotten done. If you're really struggling to kick this guilt out, making a done list can actually be really powerful because when you look at the done list, you are seeing everything that you did accomplish today. And it is good and important to celebrate those things, to have gratitude for what you have gotten done and to see what is filling your time. It's easy to feel guilty for not getting all the things done whenever you're not actually thinking about what you are getting done. If you had children to take care of or other loved ones to take care of, you had meals to make, you had to drive carpool, you had three hours of commuting because there was really bad traffic if you're working a full-time job. There are so many things that fill our time and it's unrealistic to think that we could also spare an extra three hours to clean and organize the house and finish these craft projects and volunteer at a shelter and all of these other things. Everyone has a very limited amount of time in their days. I don't think I need to rehash that for anyone. I think we're all very aware of that. And so it's important to be realistic with what you can get done and then to be thankful and proud of yourself for what you have accomplished. This is where I think some of those like Pinterest motivational quotes, they can do us a disservice whenever we read all of the quotes about following your heart and following your feelings. And we read that as following your emotions, as letting your emotions tell you how you should feel about something because you can easily just feel really overwhelmed. You know, it's dreary outside. It's just one of those days and you're feeling really overwhelmed. Maybe you got 
everything on, your main priorities list done, but you're still feeling overwhelmed, that's where there's going to be this push and pull of, do I listen to my feelings that say, ooh, I feel overwhelmed, so I think I'm going to feel guilty for not getting more done, or do I listen to what I know that says, hey, I got the best things done today. And those two are kind of in conflict. And this is where I would encourage you to stick to what you know. If your brain is telling you, yes, I got the best things done today, no matter how I feel, no matter what guilt is popping up, I got the best things done today. And when you start following what you know in your head to be right, give it time, but those emotions, they're gonna follow. But if you try and start with emotions, it's, you're probably going to be met with a lot of resistance because you're actually trying to start with the thing that comes last rather than starting with the thoughts. The thoughts are what you have control over. Emotions and feelings come and go. My goodness, I can have 10 different emotions all in one day about the same topic. But when I go with what my brain knows, that is the way for me to know how I can react and what I should be telling myself and really just adjusting my self-talk and just accepting, you know, maybe I'm going to bed again, feeling guilty again, but we're not going to wallow in that because I know I got the best things done today. And so that's the encouragement I want to give you is celebrate those wins. Tell yourself loud and proud. I got the best things done today and watch as over time, those feelings of guilt lessen and lessen and lessen. Unfortunately, there is no magic solution that's going to make the feelings of guilt forever and always go away, but we can definitely lessen them by setting our minds and being intentional about getting the best things done. All right, so going back to yesterday and this plan that I made for yesterday, on my main priorities in bucket one, I used the hop to it method and we had making the bed, which I did get done. My objectives were to go to the store that got done to write three emails, which those did get done and to order divider tabs that did not get done. And let me tell you why I was actually at a point where I was waiting on an email back from the company that we're using before I could submit the order and they did not email me yesterday. And so I got as far as I could, but I couldn't actually complete it. And I share that because I want you to know that even when using this system, even when writing it all out and doing your very best to follow this, things come up. You may write out your main priorities and then you get a call from the school and your kid is sick and you have to go pick them up. And that very suddenly becomes the main priority to take care of your sick child or whatever the situation may be. And so even when it comes to planning your days, I encourage you to hold it with an open hand, hold it fluidly and realize that you are making a plan based on the information that you have at that point in time. So if you make a plan first thing in the morning, you are making a plan with that information. Three hours later, you might have new information and that would have changed your daily plan. And that is okay. That does not mean you're a failure. That just means that life happens and it happens to all of us. And then for my passion, I had a yoga practice and I just want to encourage you with this passion section. I think it's very easy for us to see these things about like, oh, self-care and making time for myself and the things I'm passionate about and think that we need to make it some incredibly frivolous thing or think that it can't be something that has worth and value. I think that is kind of my inclination when I see passion. I'm like, oh yes, my passion, you know, the thing that doesn't really matter today. But I just encourage you to make that passion something that you really are passionate about or something that you know truly benefits you. I know that for me, physical activity really boosts my mood. It really helps my day go better. And so it's not like I'm like, oh, well, I just have to do something fun. So let me figure that out. Think about what really gives you life. What is going to make the rest of your day go better? And so that might be something like physical activity. That might be reading a favorite book. That might be taking a relaxing shower and just having some time to decompress. So really think about that and don't um, skim through it just as some sort of checklist like, oh, I have to do something fun, but find something that fills your cup. That is really the point of that passion section. Then of course we come to appointments and I did get to my appointments. If you're having trouble getting to your appointments, I just wanna make a side note. I encourage you to do a little bit of soul searching into why. Is it because you're just forgetting that you have appointments? If that's the case, then maybe something like a planner to write them down in would be a good idea. Or maybe if you're like, girl, I do not look at a planner. I feel that. And I would encourage you to find some sort of electronic system. Tell your phone to remind you or get the Alexa system and put some echo dots in your house. You can literally tell her 
the words to say to you whenever she reminds you of something. So if you want her at 315 to remind you it's time to walk out the door for your doctor's appointment, you can tell her, Alexa, remind me at 315 to walk out the door for my doctor's appointment and she will pipe up and that is what she'll tell you. So there's so much technology out there. It may take a little bit of trial and error to figure out exactly what is the best solution for you. Lastly, we have the wish list. And I personally love this part of the three bucket system. I use my wish list to make my main priorities. And there are so many tasks and to do's just throwing around in my head. And I would be really afraid of forgetting them. But by putting them on my wish list, I know that I won't. And then it's a lot easier for me to make my main priorities when I already have my wish list, or I kind of think of it like a master to do list. When I already have that, I just go pull things off of it. And for the next day or whenever I'm making my next list of main priorities, pull them off my wish list and I can keep referring back and just seeing how many things I get done. So I hope that this has been an encouragement to you. I hope that this has filled your cup and lifted your spirits watching this. And I just want to encourage you that you are capable, you are not a failure. And just remember, set your mind make those intentions and follow through and then tell yourself that you are doing a good job because you can overcome this guilt. You are not destined to live like this forever. And I am cheering for you and I hope the absolute best for you.